All right. I think today, or this weekend, I'm going to paint these guys. Or at least make a good dent into the progress on painting these guys. And I'll do like a quick, quick rundown of how I do that process. This is the set of brushes that I mostly use. I could just pick them up from Hobby Lobby in the miniatures making section with all the paints and, and the brushes and everything. Uh, they've been working just fine for me. I keep them safe by hanging onto these you know, protective tubes to protect the uh, between paint jobs. I also use these mini brushes occasionally to get inside some hard to reach crevices and features on some of the parts. The little thistles on the end of these little brushes, they come off pretty fast so I actually use them to dip in and grab small amounts of paint for mixing with these little brushes instead of using these to mix my paint uh, on my wet palette which I'll show you how that works in a second too. For my wet palette all I do is I've got an old like takeout tray and then a piece of um, paper towel folded over itself to give it a little extra padding and then this is actually this isn't wax paper this is parchment paper and this is actually the barrier that the paint will sit on that keeps it semi moisturized to keep it from drying fast but not mixing in the water um, into the paint to make it thinner than it needs to be so I'll wet this and I'll show you kind of what that looks like now that I put the water in there you can see that it's sticking to the paper towel but there's I mean there's parts of the surface that have the water droplets on them and that actually I'll use that water uh, a little bit to loosen up my paint, get a little bit lighter uh, mix or easier application, but then there's some spots that are more apparently dry, but they're still semi-moist through the barrier of the parchment paper, so it keeps that paint dry faster when you're working with small volumes of paint that you don't want to dry out fast. It's a great technique. I saw it when I was looking up painting originally, these miniatures. Um, some really good channels out there that um, have a lot more skill than I do just learning from them and, and, and getting started. Anybody who's done watercolors also knows about having at least one or two water cups. Generally the watercolors you have two. One that's going to be cleaner and, and, and for thinning out and one that's just going to be for the mess and for the cleaning. Um, for miniatures like this I usually only need one. This is generally what my setup looks like when I'm painting most of the time. Keep my brushes that are currently un being unused on the side and then I got my palette in the middle here and then my dipping uh, brushes to grab the paints from, from up here which I take out periodically to mix or to grab fresh. And then these, the screwdrivers are actually what I use to consistently grip. It lets you manipulate the piece without touching the paint that you're putting on there and you can position it in places to get paint where you wouldn't be able to normally reach very easily if it was sitting upright or if you were painting on it directly so this is a great tip that I found sticking them with a little bit of just a little bit of sticky tack to the screwdrivers or sometimes I've got bigger pieces and I can grab it and actually stick it to you know an old pill bottle so um, another great one for for bigger pieces I use for these now before I put any colors on any of these guys, um, we're going to need to put a little primer layer on here, which means I'm going to spray paint them with uh, white, white spray paint. There are specifically um, there are specifically surface primer paints for you know plastic surfaces and like that. Um, this works great. This is you can find this in the model section of Hobby Lobby. It's a little expensive for the size of it though. So after this one ran out the first time, I just switched to um, a bigger, regular, just like matte paint. Uh, this has been working fine. It's just, you gotta make sure it dries before you try to get any of your special, you know, acrylic paints on there.
All right, so I finished spray painting all my gaikotsu. Um, it looks all right. They got a little heavy-handed in some places. That's the downside of using more generic purpose spray paint. Uh, not quite as uniform as like the, you know, the higher tier model specific paint, but this should be able to get the job done. They should be able to dry pretty fast and then we can move on to actually painting them with our miniature paint. So looks good. See you in a little bit once they're dry. Our little skeleton squad is looking ready to roll here. So I think we're gonna start with one of these pike dudes and then move from there. Uh, focus, there you go. Blah. Generally with this process, you wanna work from light colors to dark. Thankfully for this job, it's gonna be pretty decently easy since <laughs> our primer has almost got them to the colors that we want them at. But generally for the skeletons, I usually find that a mix of white and tan gets the job done for bones pretty good. And then you can add a little bit of detailing and dirt later, but um, for the most part, this should be a pretty decently easy job to get at least started. And like I was saying earlier, I'll use one of these brushes to get my paint out of here. So anybody could do this. They could use a toothpick. Oh, normally I don't go that deep. And normally I don't have a camera on, so that's probably why I messed up. But grab a little bit of that paint. That's how I mix like small amounts of it. Just grab a little bit more. Just get a little bit of that ready to go. And then I'm going to mix in a little bit of the other one with this same little brush here, well, what's left of a brush to get our paint mixed, and then I start incorporating the brushes and painting stuff on. Got a nice little off-white cream color for the skeleton. It mixed with a little bit of that water droplets we saw on the surface. Usually you want to start adding in lighter amounts and then make it darker and darker progressively as you go. So that's where I'll start. Since we're painting a decent sized surface area, not like fine detail for this part of the guy, I'll start with a heavier brush. Um, and then work my way lighter, but I can't imagine I'm going to need to do a lot of detailing at least until the very end on these skeletons. Get the brush a little wet, get it ready to go, and then I gotta figure out how I'm gonna film this. <laughs> Alright, I think I got a decent setup for this to at least get the process going a little. So I got a little bit of a wet brush now. And start getting, make sure it's not super wet because then it's going to thin out even what I've already got thin wise. The paint's coming on there nice and thin and then I'm going to start just coming on there. Short, small strokes. Get a nice starting layer on this guy. Just to get things started. And like I was saying earlier, you just kind of slowly build it up from the bottom layers or from the lightest colors first. That's how I do it. Um, let me work from there. This is going to take so, take a while, but I'll come back to you in a little bit here and let's see where we get to. The reason you paint light colors first is that painting over them is a lot easier to correct than if you had dark colors on there first. Obviously this is not hard and true, sometimes your characters are going to have uh, darker features on, bot on lower layers, quite literally on their skin surface first, um, but generally you're going to want to paint the lighter colors first. Got our first off-white layer on this guy, <laughs> probably doesn't look too much different from you know, the bright light that I got going on here, but yeah, the reason you do this first is it's, it's just easier to go over light errors and mistakes. Um, than it is to go over dark errors, mistakes. So generally I'll be working on more than one at a time and in the time that the first layer dries on the first couple parts I'll be working on the next two if it's like duplicates and then I can go right back in the cycle and the loop of uh, getting to the second layer on these guys to start getting the dark colors darker and darker and darker as we move along. Um, you can kind of see it a little bit better there, that, that cream color that's coming into the bones a little bit after just one layer. But this guy's drying pretty fast and I got the AC humming away, so just keep going on him. Starting to look a little bit more yellow and bony after another layer. Colors are a little bright and intense, but 
I think this part's gonna really benefit from that wash my sister got me for Christmas uh, to really bring out some of the details. So once I paint his spear, I'll show you kind of how that one works because that's gonna be probably pretty cool to enhance all the crevices and sections of bone that are hollow. <laughs> like I was saying, I try to take good care of my brushes. So clean it off, rinse it off, and then bring it to a point again, and then I put it back in the little plastic sleeve cover. I am sad. For some reason, my matte black like dried up, and I mean, I played with a little bit, so it's just like a ball in there now, but it's like a ball of like squishy, mostly dry paint, so I've had to use the gloss black for the, the spear tip here on him, which isn't bad for this purpose, but for other things that I'm going to want to use the black for, I'm probably going to have to get another bowl of... bowl. <laughs> another little uh, tester paint full of uh, a more matte black, unfortunately. I'm going to run to the store for that, but I'll show you a little trick. Because I want, this isn't going to be a black tip, it's going to be actually like a metal. I'll show you a little trick I like that I found online to make it look like metal. So after you've painted a surface black, you can use um, if you got a silver met metallic paint, which if you used it by itself, it would look a little too kind of funky and a little too chrome-like, in my opinion. So the trick I learned that I saw online is you get like a pretty dry brush or get a little bit of the silver paint on here. Just get it on the brush and then do a couple swipes to get it like dry. And then you brush it onto the tip of the whatever surface you were trying to make that look like brushed metal. So I'll show you what that looks like. See how with the black under layer and then the light brush on top, it looks more like iron or steel than, you know, a brand new Toyota Camry rolling down the highway next to you. A little bit more real, a little bit more rugged looking for that metal piece. This is the wash I was talking about earlier that my sister got me for Christmas. This is what's hopefully going to bring out some of the details on uh, the skeleton and really make him pop. You work from the bottom up when you apply it. You start at the feet and then work your way to the head. And what it does is it gradually sinks down, thanks to gravity, into the crevices of the features uh, on your part. And then it really brings out some of the details, makes them pop. The trick with that is you kind of have to apply it all really fast and make sure it covers the whole surface and it doesn't pool up too badly in places, but damn, it really worked wonders for the skeleton. I thought it would work great, but guys, it's, it's been seconds since I recorded the last video and look at what that wash has done. I haven't added any other paint other than that wash layer, which I mixed a little bit in here with a little bit of extra water just to loosen it up a little bit. And I just applied that wash layer and it's just naturally settling in all the crevices of the skeleton and it looks amazing. I have not painted another dollop of any acrylic paint on here. That's just the wash making it look and enhance all the shadows and all the crevices. While it's still not fully dry, you can go in there with a wet wet brush like I just did and dab it out of some of the places. You don't want it to like really build up like in that little forearm spot there. There was a lot pulling up and you can go in there and you can clean it out with a slightly wet brush and then you know, wipe it off on here um, and get some of the extra out there. That wasn't from that but still um, make it look a little bit neater. It does tend to make the part look dirtier, which is for the most part with D&D stuff looks good. But if you're really trying to get bright colors to pop um, on, a, on a feature of, you know, something that's not meant to be like super dirty, you're going to probably want to go easy on the washer or pass or uh, do it after you do this wash layer. This is definitely the best outcome I've had with the wash so far. I mean, that looks that's great. I love how it came out for the skeleton. We're gonna have to do this on all of them for sure. My last step is painting the bases. Um, I'll just go probably black. Might go gray, who knows, depending on, maybe even green, depending on the environment. I generally don't do too much with the bases. Special, like putting like patches of grass on there. Uh, I try to keep it simple. All right. This guy is done, and he looks great. Painted, the base is painted. Everything's all set. And you're like, oh yay, I'm all done. Nope. That's just one of 
you know, just as on this last batch of, you know, seven. So there's six left. So you can imagine it, it adds up, but you could sit here and plug away and do this to music or put on a favorite TV show and really kind of get in the zone if that's the kind of thing you like to do. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll uh, maybe post some pictures or something about some of the other ones I make from this, especially that, you know, that one climbing the mountain of other skulls. I think it's kind of, kind of dope if it comes out nice, so. All right, peace out, everybody. Have a good one.